we can determine the masses of nuclei by using what's called the Bainbridge mass spectrometer. Now, how does it work? First of all, we have one area here where we have uh, the gas that we're uh, analyzing. We fire the electron beam and that ionizes uh, the gas. When it's ionized, it will become positively charged and it will be accelerated towards the cathode and then we'll shoot through here and then in this area here we have a magnetic field. What happens with the magnetic field is that it will uh, bend the path of the the charged particle. Using Fleming's left hand motor ball, um, the magnetic field is going into the board, into the, the screen. The direction of the current is downwards because these are carried by positive charge, which means there's a force at this point to the right. Here's a force diagonally upwards, here's a force upwards. So, what are the sections of this uh, thing that are important, the main parts of it? Well, we have the first is the ionizing chamber, where uh, the electrons ionize the gas, so it becomes positively charged. Then it gets accelerated, um, and this is acceleration part. Then it gets collimated, which means that there's a uh, that the charge is put into a, a narrow beam here. Then this section is where it goes into the magnetic field, where it's bent by the magnetic field, and, and it will end up here, which will be where the detector lies. Things that you need to be aware of is that if you have um, two isotopes of the same element, so this ionized the same way, um, and we have mass 1 and mass 2. If mass 2 is greater than mass 1, it will um, have a greater radius of curvature and this detector will be able to find out by looking at the radius of curvature what the mass is. If it detects that it goes in here it knows it's got a large um, mass, here it knows it's got a smaller mass. This is with the same um, acceleration voltage. And this is basically what it is. So we have an ionizing chamber, we have an accelerator, it gets collimated there, which means stretched into a, a straight line, and gets curved by the magnetic field, and then there's a de detector. And here we have the, the same diagram again, and we you should be able to equate some equations that describe this. The first one is the kinetic energy, which is given by the potential, def uh, potential difference uh, between the cathode and the node. That's going to be a large potential difference. So the EV is equal to half MV squared. So you should end up with this. V squared is equal to 2E big V, which is the potential difference divided by M. So you should be able to uh, do the equation and get this. Another one is when it goes into the magnetic field, the centripetal force will be equal to BQV. And if you rearrange that, you'll end up with this ratio. BR over V is equal to M over Q. Now you can see that um, if we have a larger accelerating voltage, the velocity will be greater. If we have a larger velocity, then the radius of curvature will be greater. That's obvious. What's less obvious is that if you have a larger mass, the velocity will be um, slightly smaller. Slightly smaller. Not by the same factor, because this is a squared. Um, so what's going to happen here is if the mass is, is twice as much, the velocity will not be twice as much, it will be root two times as much. So this will be, have the big effect. So it means that the mass will have the dominating effect on the, the radius of curvature, not the velocity. It has a smaller effect. So increasing the, the, the potential, potential difference increases the velocity and hence r. Therefore you get larger circles, larger radius of curvature. If you increase the mass, this also increases V, but to a smaller degree, which means that the uh, R will increase slightly. And this is the uh, mass spectrometer.